Hello and welcome to today's video on the SolidWorks lofted bend feature. My name is Robert French and I'm an applications engineer with Go Engineer. So we do already have quite a few sheet metal videos up on our YouTube channel, but nothing that really takes a top-down look at the lofted bend feature, so we're going to dissect it completely and go over every option. So with lofted bends, we're operating very similarly to the SolidWorks loft and boundary features, whether those are solid body or surface body. We're going to require two or more cross-sectional profiles that we're lofting through. However, unlike standard loft and boundary features, the sheet metal doesn't allow us guide curves. Sheet metal also has an added restriction that these profiles must be open contours. And real quickly on open contours, we have almost two identical shapes here. The almost circle on the left is what we would call an open contour because it doesn't form a closed loop. Whereas you can see the shape on the right does form a closed loop and with the new shaded sketch contours uh, command active, it will actually shade in those shapes that are a closed contour. So it's pretty easy to tell uh, what type you're dealing with. There are two different types of lofted bends. First we have the bent type and we're creating traditional sheet metal bends and this is kind of specified by the user during the lofted bend creation and we'll kind of dive more into that in the different options there. But this essentially allows us to use a gauge table. So we're taking advantage of things like known bend radii, K factors, bend, bend deduction, bend allowance, and building all of that intelligence into our model. But we also have the formed type. Formed is still sheet metal, but we're not using a manufacturing process of bending. So the number of faces isn't really specified during the lofted bend uh, uh, feature uh, or our property manager, but rather it's based on the number of entities in the profiles, which is kind of similar functionality to your traditional loft and uh, boundary features. But because we're not really bending this, this isn't a bent manufacturing method, we're not able to use the gauge table because things like K factors, bend deductions, and bend allowances can no longer apply. So let's jump into the software and take a look at some of this in action. So here we are in SOLIDWORKS and I've kind of got some profiles set up already to explore the lofted bend command. Let's start with these two circular profiles on the far left. I'll run my lofted bend command. You can see I'm in the bent type here in my property manager and it's asking me for my profile so I'll choose each of them. And also notice where I chose on the profiles. Much like loft and boundary commands when we're choosing multiple profiles in succession we want to try to choose a similar location on each profile just to ensure that we're not getting any kind of overlap in between those profiles. We want entities to kind of line up between each profile. And right now I'm getting kind of a blocky shape. Why is that? Well under our faceting options we have four types. Right now on cord tolerance with a tolerance value of two inches our part, our kind of final bent part, is allowed to deviate by as much as two inches from our original shape. That doesn't make it conform to our shape very well, gives it a lot of wiggle room, and, and doesn't give us a, a great final product. So if I were to turn down this facet value to say 50 thousandths of an inch, well now we're not allowing very much deviation, the part conforms to our sketches a lot better, but it has to introduce quite a few extra bends in order to achieve that. If we want, our second option here, we can specify the number of bends. Once again, a circle represented with five bends, the best you're going to get is a pentagon. If we were to turn up this value, 50 bends, we get much better conformity once again. Moving on, we have segment length. This is the distance between each bend line. The bigger this value, the fewer bends were allowed and less conformity. Right now at five inches, not looking super healthy, but if I were to take this value down to one inch, let's say. Much better conformity, a lot more bends. Next option is segment angle. At 10 degrees for each kind of bend, over a 360 degree circle, you're looking at roughly 36 bends. Where if I took this value to 90 degrees, well, these are some pretty, uh, pretty you know, awkward bends and doesn't give us a lot of bends, and so the shape can't conform to its profile as well. Since we're on the bent type, this is a bent manufacturing method. It knows in the real world this part will be bent. And therefore, things like our gauge tables are relevant if we so choose. We can always type in custom overridden values, but having gauge tables is great. Lets you know about your K factors, bend allowances, bend deductions. 
your different relief options, rectangular tear, aub round. But because this is a bent part, all of these factors come into play. That would be in contrast to the formed part where we're not using a bend manufacturing method and those don't come into play. So we'll hit check mark on that guy, move to our next set of profiles, non-circular, but that's cool. And just like our standard loft and boundary features, it can be a healthy practice to have a similar number of entities between your profiles. We'll see here in a sec, when we choose them, I'm gonna set my uh, faceting option to number of bends, five, and now choose my next profile. You can see it does a really great job of keeping straight lined up with straight, arc lined up with arc, but number of bends five. There's not five total bends, there's five total bends per kind of circular or arc section. So just be aware of that when you're dealing with kind of straight and arcs or, or profiles that contain both or one contains one and one contains the other. You're gonna have these different options. We're gonna explore a few of them here as well. On the next guy, we have a dissimilar number of entities Right, we have five or so up top, nine or so beneath. And this arc kind of lines up with this straight edge. And one of these guys is going to have to give and, and kind of give into the other to have kind of a smooth transition between these two profiles. So let's grab our lofted bend command, choose between them. And you'll notice once again, the straight line really doesn't want to have any bend lines come on in. That makes sense, obviously. But with number of bends set to five, each one of these circular areas gets five bends on each of these corners of this bottom profile. You can see up top though that these kind of circular or arc sections are forced to accept all of those because the straight line doesn't influence it at all and that's the only arc in the upper profile that can try to match the bend lines with these profiles below. So this kind of speaks to some of the rules about traditional surface and, and solid body loft and boundary features, which is the uh, profile with the most number of entities kind of gets his way. Uh, in loft and boundary, if, if you're lofting from uh, a profile with five entities to a profile with one, you're gonna end up with five faces because that profile with the most number of entities just kind of has his way once again. Hit check mark on that guy and move on to this last uh, kind of example where we have sharp corners on this bottom profile. Now what does that do to us? So I jump in, choose my two profiles, and typically we have this option on called refer to endpoint. And what that's doing is telling the software very clearly that there is an endpoint there, there is a sharp corner there. SolidWorks comes back with, well, you can't achieve bends to a sharp corner, you're gonna be blowing out material, ripping it, and that's not really an achievable geometry. If you want to say, I don't care, give me the perfect world, you can uncheck that refer to endpoint and it kind of smooths out that corner for you. Perfect. All right, I deleted all of the bent type lofted bends. Let's jump into the command one more time and this time use formed. You'll notice with this option on in the property manager, we no longer have access to a lot of the sheet metal options, namely gauge tables and associated parameters. That's because we've told the software we're not bending this part. We're not using, using traditional methods like press breaks and things like that. Therefore, we don't need parameters like K factors, relief options. They just don't make sense in this, in this manufacturing method. Similar workflow though, we're simply clicking our two profiles. And you'll notice my preview gives me a perfectly conforming shape, very true to my original sketches. Over in the property manager, we have number of bend lines. Even if I were to kick that up to say, let's go with five, you don't see really any changes in the preview. If I hit check mark here, still a pristine shape. It's because we're assuming a forming method that gives us this kind of good circular geometry. It's once I jump to the flat pattern that we kind of see the sheet metal equivalent of this formed part. Five bend lines that I specified earlier, one on each edge of the part and three in the middle. If I jump back into that guy and edit it. Over here in the property manager, I'm gonna to switch to maximum deviation. And we saw that earlier in the bent type. Bigger deviation allows for kind of a more square part that doesn't conform as well. So this is pretty tight conformance, 50 thou. We'll hit check mark 
part still looks perfectly pristine. It's only once I go to the flat pattern once again that we see that in order to have the conformity of 50 thou, we're going to need this many bend lines in an equivalent sheet metal part to have that accuracy. Moving on here, looking at some other profile types. If I run it one more time. We know a rule from lofted uh, lofts and boundaries in, in the, in the uh, surface body and solid body world. The number of faces on the side of our part, whichever profile had the biggest number of entities in it, that's how many faces we end up with on our lofted part. It's kind of opposite here. So we had a, a profile up top with five entities, a profile down below with nine entities. In a normal loft and boundary feature, that's going to be nine faces on this part because the profile with the biggest number wins out. It's actually the opposite here. This guy up top with only five faces wins out and kind of blends together these straight and arc sections at the bottom of the part. Last thing here in the form type, just kind of a, a restriction or a, a limitation, we can't go to sharp corners. So this profile down below is invalid. We'd have to add fillets in the corners or use a bent type uh, lofted bend command. Cool. That's nice comprehensive overview of the lofted bend tool. Thank you for watching.